Welcome to the DMT One to One Show, episode seven, recorded on the twenty fifth of April, twenty thirteen. I'm here with uh, Derek Funger, CEO of uh, Tunesy. We had a couple of technical issues in the first uh, trial, but it's great to have you on the show and thanks for joining me. How's it going? Good, how are you? Great, thank you. Uh, and so uh, I wanted to talk about Tunesy. First of all, uh, what does the company do uh, today? And uh, then we can talk maybe about the iterations of the company. Sure. Um, today we focus on helping online content creators monetize through selling experiences to their most engaged fans. So. Content creators include musicians, uh, bloggers, dancers, comedians, anyone who has an online presence. Um, and we focus on YouTube content creators. And fan experiences are things like uh, meet and greets, Skype chats, um, dinners, any type of engagement uh, events between a fan and a content creator, whether it's online or offline, for profit or for charity. Yeah, sure. And uh, um, uh, I, I was um, hearing in an interview that you gave a few months ago that uh, you had the idea for the company uh, around April 2011. And, uh, you know, the company has been around since last year. And so how, how has it evolved uh, from the initial concept uh, to what it is today? Yeah, I think uh, the concept originally was it was more like a social record label. We saw that there was opportunity for disruption um, in the recorded music business. We wanted to kind of replace or replicate an online uh, and, and label through an online platform where we allow musicians to stay independent. Yeah, exactly. uh, but we pivoted away from that concept because we saw more opportunity in this space, and uh, we kind of relaunched the product uh, in November of 2012 at the Billboard uh, Future Sound Conference. Yeah, exactly. And and you actually uh, won the Billboard uh, Future Sound Conference Innovation Showcase. So was that was that a good springboard for you guys? Oh, it definitely was a good springboard. I think. Um, we met a lot of interesting people through that, and the judging panel consisted of people who, you know, have been in the music business for many, many years, including you know, one of the original investors of Pandora, a uh, former uh, VP of EMI Digital, a uh, current uh, head of business development at Warner Music. So I think the panel was great, and I think um, it was just good validation and, and provided a lot of credibility for what we're doing. Yeah, sure. And one of the big campaigns that you've uh, you've, you've had since uh, since uh, the, the new D two C focus of the site has been the Naughty by Nature one. And there's actually a great video that I would encourage the audience to go and check out, uh, where they explain sort of how it worked out, and there's testimonies from the fans as well. Uh, so how did that campaign go? Yeah, I think it went very well. I think uh, they were very happy. If you watch the video, you'll see that you know they said that they've never done something like that before. Uh, the fans were super happy because they um, got an experience and they did something, um, got something really cool and engaging, um, got to meet the guys from Naughty by Nature. Uh, we had about 80 fans come out, so I think overall it went very well. Yeah. And I think overall um, it was a good opportunity for Naughty by Nature to kind of you know, make a bit of money, give something back to the fans, and do something that's super innovative in the in the music business. Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, one of the big features that is is quite in intriguing about the service is that you know companies like Kickstarter or Pledge, uh, uh, the artists have to set their prices and and exactly what the nature of the um, the pledges and, and, and you know the, the prizes is going to be uh, when they set up the campaign. So that poses some issues because of course uh, artists might not necessarily know exactly what the fans want or have the best, uh, the best idea as to what the ex experience the fans are, are really hoping to get is. Uh, so you have a, a, a feature on, on Tunesy to actually help artists understand that, right? Yeah, we do. Um, we have a feature called Wishlist which allows uh, fans to wish for the types of experiences they want with with a content creator. So yeah. it's very simple, you go on as a fan and you make a wish. So it could be, I wish I could have dinner with um, Coldplay, for example, and then different fans make wishes and uh, they provide information like the price that they're willing to pay, where they want the experience. Um, and ultimately the creator, content creator, get all that information and they can put it to use to create and craft a experience for the fans. So I think ultimately, um, it's, it's just a good demand generation and you can even use it for a Kickstarter campaign to be honest as well. Yeah. Like I've had some people use it um, that way to brainstorm ideas for uh, a campaign on Kickstarter or another crowdfunding platform. So that's, that's how the feature works. Yeah, of course. And, um, you know, a, a company like Tunisia, of course, is, is a, a 
I could see it work very well uh, alongside you know other services or integrated uh, as part of a broader offering for example on, on a D2C front uh, do you guys have any partnerships in mind uh, for, for uh, bringing this to more artists yeah I mean we're working with um, uh, a lot of management companies right now we're working with some of the labels we're working with brands yeah um, to sponsor experiences we're working with um, uh, you know, I think also the Kickstarters and Indiegogos of the world, uh, other crowdfunding platforms where Toonzy can be used kind of as a post crowdfunding campaign yeah. Um, yeah. Through, through that way so that people can raise even more money just directly by selling an experience directly to the fans. Yeah. So yeah. Um, those are the types of partnerships that we have. And I think sometime in June we'll be announcing some more partnerships that we are coming out with. Yeah, that's so, great. Awesome. And, you know, what we're seeing more and more companies uh, get into the sort of uh, crowdfunded space also on the on the live front, for example, you know, Songkick has got a great project with uh, with Detour uh, that is, uh, you know, adding more and more artists to that to that for. Uh, how do you see, uh, you know, this side of things uh, progressing? Because, of course, you have a lot of uh, cool independent artists and you know, YouTube artists as well. And how, how do, do you feel when you chat to them, this part of the business fits within their broader sort of uh, campaign strategy and release strategy? I think that, um, so Nielsen during South by Southwest released a report saying that there's up to $2.6 billion of revenue uh, to be to be made in the music business if managers and labels can help their artists better monetize premium content and experiences. Yeah. So I think it's clear that artists have to do something um, uh, in that field because it's just a really untapped revenue. A lot of artists are still used to selling their product, which is their music, yeah. but ultimately they shouldn't worry about monetizing the product anymore. They should be worried about monetizing the fans. Um, and they can do that through experiences, they can do that through concerts, and I think it's important for them to understand that, you know, it's, it's all about monetizing the brand that they've built now, yeah. Um, yeah. and I think really it, it's pretty simple uh, part of their, their revenue and their business because they're already doing a lot of these things anyways. Some of them are doing, giving it away through contests, some of them are I mean, a sound check. Um, we've had some people interested in like a sound check experience. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, ultimately, it, it's not too hard to grasp of a concept. I think it's just as long as they're comfortable with monetizing it in a very classy way so that the fans don't feel like they're being like ripped off. Uh, yeah. That's you know, what we're trying to do here. Yeah, sure, of course. Uh, how, do you, how are you finding uh, Toronto as a base for, for a startup? That's, uh, uh, I haven't spoken to a lot of startups yet from Toronto, but I hope I, hope I will. Toronto is definitely growing. Um, it's not, and it's not, nowhere close to San Francisco or, I mean, LA has got a pretty good scene as well, but Toronto, um, there's a lot of startups, but there aren't too many digital media with a focus on like entertainment because yeah. the whole industry is out in LA. So um, I think, you know, it's definitely booming. It's definitely doing well. It's um, in Canada, I'd say Toronto is number one for startups. Yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely, you know, we're trying to, be on pace to to really um, be up to par with some of the major U.S. cities, but it's not not really there yet. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, as with all ecosystems, it will take a while. And uh, do you find that uh, I heard in the interview uh, I listened to that you you also ended up sort of into the startup space also after the sort of the economy uh, bust uh, of a couple of years ago. So did you find that that also was something that? Uh, uh, boosted the startup uh, ecosystem a bit like it happened in new york after you know the, the huge uh, crash uh, where a lot of people turned to entrepreneurship uh, after you know they, they lost their job or, or whatever happened yeah i think it's something that i did because it, partly is because of the economy partly is because you know i'm young and want to do something more interesting of course. so um that's kind of how all that stuff came about and definitely see more and more entrepreneurs come from the very corporate fields because our generation, it, we're all about you know doing new things. We're all about um, being our own boss, and yeah. I think we'll see more and more of those type of um, entrepreneurs moving forward. Yeah, and and, and that's sort of part of uh, where you came in as a company, where you were talking about you know a new model for labels and the fact that labels are going to look very different in five years' time. And and, and 
in in that optic, looking at sort of the type of artists that you have, also that are very involved in in the YouTube community and have huge followings on that platform, uh, I guess they are missing a piece in the sense that they have a, a big community on YouTube that they are maybe partially monetizing through advertising, but that's uh, I guess still relatively small money. Uh, but they don't have the the recorded music support uh, to actually monetize directly what they do as musicians. So that's where you come in and you actually provide a, an alternative an alternative way for them to to create some revenue. And that's why we think that YouTube is such a powerful um, platform because you're getting a lot more of, um, on the music side, you're getting a lot of artists on YouTube who they built, you know, they do covers um, and because they've done a lot of music covers, they've built a big following um, and they built a brand and people like them not only for their music, but for their brand. Yeah. And so a lot of them, you know, don't have huge um, recording contracts to go into studios and record professional music. A lot of them just love, you know, sitting in front of a computer, playing music, building their following that way. And I think over time, you'll find that there'll be more and more of those as the cost to record and the cost to really build a following drastically decreases. And that's where we really come in because we're, we're helping them monetize that brand that they've built um, through experiences and in the future through other um, different means as well. But um, I think, you know, that's what makes us on par with the trends yeah. of YouTube and with kind of where the, the industry is going right now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the lastly, to talk about uh, fulfillment, of course, it's a it's a big issue for, you know, artists that do campaigns on Kickstarter. And sometimes, you know, they don't take into account how much postage is going to cost on CDs. And they realize that, uh, bam, they've spent, you know, a third of, of all the money they made on postage. And, and, you know, they haven't actually made any money out of the campaign. Uh, so uh, how, do, how do you help artists uh, sort of understand what the financial issues around a campaign are? And uh, uh, how how do you think what's the best way to manage fulfillment of the campaign once once it's over? Yeah, so we work we work very closely with um, with artists to really understand these things, and I think what we re we recommend to them is we say um, you know include that some of those prices in the price point of a ticket um, because if you don't, you'll lose out on some money there. So I think ultimately uh, we try our best to just work with them to understand like the P and L impact of these experiences, how much they're going to walk away with. And I think that to really make um, things scalable, we're trying to figure out like what are some online and offline experiences that these guys can do um, to both make money and to scale and, and to provide it to more fans versus like a small exclusive number of fans. But I think yeah. what, we tell, what we tell them is if you're doing something more intimate, then it makes more sense to charge more money um, per ticket uh, for access versus if you're charging less fans. So yeah. I think ultimately it's just the education that comes with um, the platform and that's something that we're focus focusing a lot on um, to help these artists really understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. And, uh, you know, of course, I would recommend everybody to go and check out uh, tunesy.com. And, uh, you know, are, are you guys also taking on, uh, you know, maybe proposals from artists or do, is there any way to get in touch with you if anybody would be interested to actually uh, work with you somehow? Yeah, definitely. My email is uh, Derek, D-E-R-R-I-C-K, at tunesy.com. And right now we're actually uh, working on some big brand deals. So if you're an artist and you want to do an experience and you want exposure to some brands, uh, that's also some, some value add that we're looking to provide as well. That's great. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. And uh, uh, I look forward to seeing what's going to happen with Tunesy. Great. Thank you. Thank you. If you enjoyed the show, remember to check out our weekly music tech news show on digitalmusictrends.com.